Hello YouTube, this is Ready Set Exploit. We're going to be doing volatility, which is a fun digital forensics room from TriHack Me. We are tasked with um, two cases where we just have to find a little bit more about um, uh, the host machine. It's a memory dump, and this is a great challenge for anyone trying to get better at digital forensics when performed on memory dumps and the volatility tool okay now i will won't be going over the questions directly i'll you know sort of emulate how you can find them so that way you know you kind of get a little bit from the tool i'll cover maybe some different ways you could find it and i'll also cover some references where uh, you know i use like a little cheat sheet that can be helpful um also I'll be using both Volatility 2 and Volatility 3. So for Volatility 2, I downloaded the files, which you can actually see here. You can get that from the uh, from the room, I believe it's task 1. And I'm going to, s for Volatility 3, I'm going to SSH into the server. Uh, so that way, because um, that Volatility 3 comes installed. Volatility 3 uses Python. Volatility 2 is just the binary. I prefer using the binary, uh, mainly because it's pretty straightforward to download you just move it to the um, your bin directory or wherever your path is and then it's pretty much installed it's pretty much there uh volatility 3 requires a little bit more it's not that it's difficult it's just it's just a preference so without further ado i'll go ahead and get started first i'm gonna go ahead and create um now for this sake make sure you have your vpn started and i'm gonna call this one Volatility 2 and this one Volatility Volatility 3 Got bigger The credentials is THM Analyst and the IP address is given when you fire up the VM I do yes and do the password I believe is infected and we are in uh, the files are in the root directory scenarios, investigations, files there, and the volatility tool is in opt, volatility 3, and there it is. Uh, my volatility uh, doesn't come installed with Linux, so it's, um, you could just Google volatility 2, download volatility 2, download um volatility foundation so you could there's the releases you could download the one for see standalone and then let's just open that terminal here make that bigger let's minimize this and our download folder that and let's say unzip volatility 2 and if we go into that directory, we have the standalone here. You could move that to your um, path. So you could put it like here in this directory or on your user bin, and then you can run it just like I am now. So pretty straightforward. Just gonna clear everything from here. Yes. And we are done with that. And that's up pretty easy my references um, pretty straightforward so if you google like they're also on the blog post you could do volatility command reference we have this first one from the volatility foundation github this is pretty standard one right here right how to do certain things you also can do volatility uh, command reference malfind this is for malware finding same from the github page malfind this is going to be very helpful uh, volatility uh, let's see i think is you could do hack tricks and they got the sheet sheet here also very handy i'll pull that up in a second you can do volatility uh three cheat sheet um this one Ashley Pearson, this is a pretty good one as well. Um, kind of gets her. It has both like process dump, mem dump. So, a lot of, lot of tricky, um, 
I mean, not a lot of tricking, a lot of references that you can use. I'll just leave those just in case I need them, but we are here and let's get started. So let's see. So the first file, I already have them downloaded right here. Uh, we could get some basic information. Um, one, we could do image info, right? And it takes a second. For this one, we could do Python 3. Um, I'm gonna copy that. The tab autocomplete isn't the greatest on this BM for some reason. So I'm doing a lot of this. And you're gonna do this one, which is do windows.info. And probably see what I messed up on already. On a py. F. That's going. Mine started. So you're going to see, start to see some differences uh, between the two. So for example, this one tells me the suggested profiles. So let's say I want to find out the build version, right? Uh, so kind of have an idea there. This is what we could do is profile and we do kdbg scan. That'll run. This one, we get the info from Windows info, windows.info. See, we get the build version right here. And if we want to know what this is, for example, we Google that. And we get Microsoft Windows XP Professional versus 2002 Service Pack 3. So you know, we also can get a timestamp for the system time when this was created. Uh, for this one, see, we have to run the KDGB scan to get uh, the build version right here. Okay, and that's actually if we go to this one. Do I have all three pulled up? Oh, that's the hack tricks page, also very handy. So we got image info and then KDBG scan also, just a way to get more information, right? So, um, but for the date, it's actually on image info, and you get the local date time and the image time. So, a lot of handy information there. Um, so, what can we do? We can do a couple of things. First thing is we can look at any like uh, processes that are running, and we have a lot there. All right. So, PS list is one way. So, CMS, CRSS. So, a lot of standard ones. LSAS. Um, that doesn't mean they may not be malicious. This one kind of stands out a little bit. It's reader underscore SLX, a volatility three. It's, it's pretty similar. You just add a PS list at the end and it does the same thing. We get the same hit. We get the process ID here and the parent process ID all right here. And if you want to find out what's the parent process ID, you just find this number on the left side and we'll parent process explorer.exe and it's the same way here so parent process ID then you find that over here you can also get the tree view PS tree just kind of tells you what this one is and what's underneath it uh, volatility 3 that's pretty much the same thing okay and there it is Right, uh, this one and the stars kind of separated, so this is the first star, and you can kind of tell here system, sms.exe, and um, uh, TryHackMe has a great room called Windows Processes that the volatility room recommends so that you're familiar. See this uh, star system, the SMS says win logon services, and these, so these are all trees of this, and then you see this one kind of stands out, right? So uh, LSAS is a subtree of that's three of when log on and then S yeah see so you can kind of get the picture there and volatility three does the same thing so uh, but what if you didn't know um, Malfine comes in handy so Malfine right can look at certain processes and mainly looks at anything with an MZ not always but that's usually a good indicator that and it says right here, so second memory starting here was the title because it contains an executable. It's not listed in the modules list. 
So let's try that as well. Mal find. We're gonna get a lot of output. Um, let's clear this. Mal find does the same thing. So if we scroll up, it's the last two actually. So if we go all the way up, let's clear this so we start from the top. And so we have this, right? It looks fine, right? But and if we look through them, two of them get a hit. MZ, you could also just grab for MZ and explore exe which was the parent process and the PID of our suspected reader underscore SL.exe 1640 MZ and that pretty much matches over well, the example here so this is a good indication that we're dealing with um, that we're dealing with a malicious process here or at least we have a good lead on it um, so what can we do, right? How can we uh, find out more about it, right? Because we have processes. So we can do um, like a memory dump, right? Let's process dump if you want to dump the exe and that's fine. But what if we want to pro dump everything, any, anything that was related to it? So the sheet sheet has process dump and also um, memory dump right uh, PID this one also has it uh, mem dump where is it right there right um, so first we're gonna create um, a directory and then we're gonna go go ahead and memory dump the PID we want um, and the directory we want to dump it on and you see it, if we look at case dump, there it is, All right? Uh, now here, let's clear this up. Uh, so for that, it's pretty. It's a little bit different, actually. Let's uh, make uh, make a directory called uh, case. Same thing. One dump. And here, the order does matter. Um, if we look at Sheet sheet C dash O is right before any options. If you put it at the end, it's not going to work. And it's dash dash PID and then dash dash dump. Otherwise, and it's not mem dump, it's mem map. Um, so if we could do dash F dash O, oops, dash O temp case one dump. And we're gonna do windows dot mem map, and we're gonna do dash dash dump dash dash pid. Forgot the pid sixteen forty. And you, if you get a lot of output, that's fine. It's processing everything. It takes a second. And uh, we're we are given the IP address that we're supposed to look at. Um, let's see. So we could do strings, C41. That's the IP address we're given on track me room and we see at the host. So if you're familiar with curl or uh, burp, you know this usually is, uh, this is a pretty standard parameter of like who the host is. We could look at things like um, the user agent, right? And we see their user agent here. So let's see. So if we do this, right, and I'm actually going to uh, this is the only hit on it, right? Strings, we're gonna do strings, then less, forward slash, paste that, and you see, uh, we also find it here the user agent, content length, so a lot of um, good hits there. Here, do temp case one dump. It's the same thing. You could just do strings one dump grep dash i do user agent. The whoops. 
There it is. This file is actually a little bit different than what we have here. But uh, the type name is different, but um, uh, the file contents are the same. So see, we see it's a Windows, you see Mozilla Firefox 5.0. Wow, that's it's a little bit on the older side. But that is, um, you know, what else? Uh, we know that it's a banking Trojan, so we can do case. You can look up for certain banks, like you do. Um, Case you could do Bank of America, things like that. So we get a hit of Bank of America, we get a hit on Chase.com. So we do certain banks that were hit that we can look into um, and do the same here, right? But that'll do it for case one. You know, we got pretty good understanding of how um, how a lot of it worked. So we can now look at case number two. Uh, let's see here. Case number two, we could go, we could pretty much do the same thing. All right, image info. Um, and what I'm gonna do, let's see, look, if I do scenarios, investigation, now press tab. Oh, now you wanna do it, okay, there we go. Uh, for some reason, like the auto tab complete won't work if I'm doing the volatility um, option. So this one, windows.info. There we go. We have that. Profile, the first one here. We could do process list. And... Pretty much similar as the other one, right? Um, but we do see this one right here. This one stands out, right? And if you're familiar, especially if you're any kind of tech enthusiast, this looks a lot like, um, sounds like a lot like the WannaCry decryptor. I mean, the WannaCry virus. You wanna cry the decryptor, we're looking at WannaCry. Uh, so it looks like this host was infected with WannaCry. And we can look at, for example, we don't even have to run malfind. This is definitely a big indicator. We have the process ID, the parent process ID, um, PS list. So similar for, Py for Python 3, there it is. Um, 1940 is task scheduler. So this looks like pretty close to task scheduler. So. Let's see, Windows task. So this one's actually scheduled task or task SCH, right? That's the one right here, task SCH. Here we have task SCHE. It's just trying to trick you there, right? Um, and a lot of times that is common to uh, put parent process IDs so close that you you know, when you're looking at like your processes, you won't even, you get getting confused. But as you can see, it's called task SCH. Um, and then we can find, right, so we have the parent price ID, price ID. We can um, look at the, like the DLL list for it. We're gonna focus on process ID 740 to drop all the DLLs and you can look through each one to see which one stands out, um, which one's suspicious. We know malware connects through like sockets and you know, so kind of like there's an internet connection. So we look something like uh, wanna decryptor socket creation. All right, let's see. Uh, probably should keep it no it's not what I meant there you go uh, right, let's see so uh, based on the allows it performs a socket creation we have this hit one right here and that matches I believe I just saw it right 
there, right? Um, have this DLL that so looks like it is starting to come close. We also get the file um, where the files actually store Intel that directory. Um, so it's that weird directory and then the file. So everything is happening here. We can also do file scan. Um, look at decrypt and we see so it's a little bit different this is device hard this volume this is just the C directory if you were looking for where the file is located um, and we could do we could do the same thing here actually so we could do DLL list and you could do that not dash P but dash dash PID 740 and it does the same thing and we find the same where it go uh, right there there it is and that's the file right here All right we could this also has a file scan option file scan to grab decrypt and it takes a second there it is same results All right if you want looking for a particular file um, what else and we can look at any mutex so a mutex uh, it's a way malware authors use it so that way the malware doesn't execute more than once so it keeps it you know it helps keep it hidden right um, it's usually executed through the parent process id so for that uh, we'll do handles we can try the you can try the uh, process id Right, and look for any mutex here. To look through that uh, CTF, that's funny. And then you could just Google any mutex, see if any of them catch a hit, possible malware. But uh, you could also look at the parent process. And like this one, see, we have two matches here, but this one's a little bit different. We Google that one. Uh, more of a hit on WannaCry, right? So we definitely even more sure that this is a WannaCry. Um, I want to cry a virus uh, for volatility three. You just do it handles. Um, there's no T option that I know. Um, so you could do H. See so PID. Um, you could do PID. It was 1940. There's a lot. And I see it there, up there, but what if you just want to... So what I do is grab I mutant. And there we go. We have the same results. Right? Um, and again, if you wanted to find the files, uh, you remember all the files you could just do there's two ways you could do dash p the process id oh file scan doesn't have a dash p so you can do what did i do before oh that's d uh you could do it dll list so dll list will could drop it what if maybe there's some other kinds of files you could do file scan you could do grep dash i and there we go see so now we have all the files um, not DLL so DLL list dumps the DLLs right associated with that process this one dumps all the files see starting here here because we're looking at this directory so um, a lot of that there's that scheduler so and this one it's pretty much the same thing do windows file scan uh, grep dash i i think that's it and there it is get the files again so now we know this um host was infected with it want to cry ransomware and you know we can see the files the processes everything that was infected just so that we can now you get a whole big picture of what is, um, you know, what was, 
what happened to this machine. Uh, let's see. And this wasn't covered in the pose and it's definitely not covered in the room, but a couple of neat tricks here. We could look at CMD scan um, for any commands that were executed. And there are none. So um, what else can we do? Let's see, we could do CM line may not work. Oh, there we go. So if CMD scan doesn't work, you could do CMD line. Um, and this is on the first one, just to see what command lines were executed on the press ID. We also find this um, spool right here. There it is. So this came, and this is on the room description. Uh, I believe it's. I was masquerading as an Adobe document. That checks out right there. Um, let's see, can we do it on two? Two has the same hit. There it is. Uh, where it go? We knew that one was. So there's some threads here. That looks subtitled server. Let's see. Is there anything here that will indicate? That well, that's one right here, right? Aha, there it is. So, this is the command that was executed. CMD scan, CMD line are pretty handy. Um, does Python 3 have it? CMD scan, uh, does not have it. CMD line, there we go. CMD line, um, there it is, similar. Uh, let's see, the auto tab complete doesn't work there. Uh, uh, VMEM, VMEM, get the same hit. So, very uh, uh, CMD scan, CMD line. Um, let's see, are pretty handy commands that kind of give you an idea as to what. I know consoles is one of them. Let's see, there's one more. Shell bags. Uh, so plugin didn't work. Uh, I know this one. Let's see, console. See, we have consoles. So that's why I like the binary sometimes. Don't have to worry too much about plugins. So task kill. And we have shell bags. And this one's working here, so scanning for registry items. So, as you can see, well, it, it helps to know. Uh, there we go. Big hit. Look at that. Wanna cry? See, and where? We're at the desktop here. So, a um, little bit more of an idea of Python 2.0. 7, HMPY, WannaCry, so you could start getting more of an idea as to why, what was uh, what was happening in the system. So anyway, that was the room, uh, at least uh, the challenge part of the room. I definitely recommend it. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and see you all next time.